All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since we had uh, our last chat. Um, and you could probably expect that it might be a while after this one also. Uh, I don't plan on recording unless, you know, I feel I have something meaningful to say or, you know, at least I have something that you might benefit from watching. And so we've talked before about, you know, how to play to survive, how to play to not lose uh, in our, you know, beginner tutorial series. And now what I want to talk about uh, are high scores, high scoring runs. Um, and, you know, to get these really big high scores, there's a lot of luck involved. And so, you know, the strategy is typically you do a lot of re-rolls in order to get the ideal starting conditions. And then after you've achieved that, then you can actually start to play the game. Um, and so that's why it's taken me a while to get here is sort of looking for, you know, what would be an interesting seed for you to see what a high score run looks like. Uh, but before we get into the gameplay itself, uh, we should talk about, you know, in theory, how do we make a high score? You know, there's this discussion in the Blotter Discord, you know, what is the theoretical high score or, you know, theoretical highest score that you can possibly get. Um, and I think... You know, new players often get this wrong. They get really excited about, oh, what if you have 18 negatives? What if you have all of your jokers are polychrome? Well, you know, what I want to talk about is, uh, you know, what actually matters. And maybe there's a decent amount of stuff that you think matters, but doesn't actually matter. And so let's go into the collection here and let's start with what kind of hand that we want to play. You know, that's going to give us the most points. Uh, obviously we've said this in the past, uh, Flush House has the highest, uh, base amount. You know, how much bigger is it actually? Well, uh, the base amount is 200 times 20 compared to five of a kind has 100 times 10. So that's 4,000 compared to 1,000. That's four times as big. Um, or if we compare that to either a flush or a straight, you know, those are in the, you know, I want to say 250 to 280 ballpark, um, you know, with some flushes possibly giving you uh, 300 points or more. Um, and so if we're comparing that to 4,000, you know, that's going to be about uh, 14 to 15 times as much. But we know, you know, with the Saturn cards, uh, you know, with the very high scaling on this, uh, you can grow that very quickly. And so, you know, at what point is the break even point? Uh, I probably should have calculated this exactly, but I think it's, you know, somewhere between six and eight Saturn cards is going to get you to that 4,000 point mark where the flush house starts. And so, you know, with that in mind, really you should just start at the biggest one. Uh, but, you know, for your personal high scoring runs, you may not care that you get you know this world record high score you just want to do the best that you can do with the build that you like so if you want to play straights play straights if you like playing five of a kind play five of a kind uh me personally i'm going to play flush houses um i think the build is a little bit more interesting it's a little bit more interesting talking about uh you know the suit changers and how do we optimize our use of the suit changers as opposed to uh five of a kind is you just get more of whatever one card and then, you know, once we're committed to flush houses, we already talked about, you know, how high the scaling goes with the Saturn cards. And then the series cards are just a little bit better, uh, you know, about 50 or about 40% uh, better, 50% better, something like that. If we're comparing uh, plus three molt and 30 chips compared to plus five molt and 30 chips. All right, next we're going to talk about... Uh, card enhancements so of these different options you know we could get uh, extra molt we could get extra chips uh, the one that's going to give you the most uh, benefit are going to be these glass cards and we've said this in the past uh, the way the glass cards work are uh, it applies this bonus this times two bonus before any of your jokers typically before any of your jokers though there is some slight exception to that but typically before any of your jokers which means this is 
only multiplying the base molt that your hand makes. And so that is why we want to start with a hand that has a very high base. And then, you know, it doesn't matter as much what jokers we have if we can just multiply that base number uh, with these glass cards. And so if you have uh, five glass cards, each of them giving you times two bonus, then all of that together, you know, sometimes it's hard to get five glass cards, but if you get five glass cards, that is in total a times 32 multiplier. That is more than you can get from any joker. Uh, with maybe one exception, but you know, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, which means, okay, this is where it's at. What we want to do is we want to focus on picking up as many tarot cards as we can so that we can try to make as many glass cards as we can. And that's what's actually going to enable us to get these high scores. And then secondarily, uh, we want to be getting the planet cards, we want to be getting the series cards, because if I have a higher base number, before I apply my glass cards, then that is going to give me huge gains as well. So we want to have a high base amount and then we get as many glass cards as we can. Now, another type of enhancement that we can get on our cards, we can see from going to the spectral packs here, the spectral cards. Um, I personally like getting, you know, sigil to create all of one suit and then that enables you to play flush houses. Uh, I like immolate. Immolate gives you two benefits at one time, gives you money, and at the same time, this removing cards is often a benefit to you. Uh, if we just have the one scoring hand, the one flush house in the whole deck, then having five less cards is going to make it guaranteed that we find it. Uh, Wraith, I don't like taking ever at all. Uh, I think, you know, the, really the only one that you're looking for is the blueprint. Uh, you've got a one in four chance to get blueprint, Losing all of your money at any point in the run uh, is brutal, and so I don't like to take that one. However, if we look at the aura here, this will enhance one of your cards. And so you've seen before foil, holographic, polychrome uh, modifications on your jokers. This applies it to a card, which means that card you can then you know put other enhancements on you can then uh, copy it with the death tarot card you can copy it with the dna joker and so really what we're looking for is we're looking for this polychrome effect so similar to the glass effect giving you instead of times two gives you times 1.5 and then that polychrome card you can then also turn into glass so with one card times 1.5 times two is a total of times three and so if I have five polychrome glass cards, that's times three for each is times 243. And so whether or not you get this polychrome effect uh, is going to determine, you know, somewhere between whether you get a million points or whether you get 200 million points or something like that. All right, and then the last piece of technology here, uh, we can look at jokers. And so with the jokers here, mostly what we're looking for are multiplicative bonuses. Uh, if we think about these additive bonuses, if we think about, okay, ride the bus, uh, we get burglar, and then we get it up to, let's say, plus 100. Let's say we get it up to plus 200 even. No, 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 we'll talk about, you know, plus 100. Okay, how much does plus 100 actually help us? If we think about uh, the flush house, the base is 20. If we get just four series cards, just four planet cards, that brings it up to 40 molt for a level five flush house. And then if starting at 40, if we do just five glass cards, then 40 times two gives us 80, times two gives us uh, 160 times two gives us 320. So already you see after three glass cards, 320. After the fourth glass card, 640. And then the fifth one takes us to, uh, you know, 1200. Uh, and so if your molt is 1200, and then after all of that, I apply this ride the bus plus 100 molt, you know, plus 200 molt or whatever, that's less than a 10% bump. 
So that's nothing. That's useless. Uh, you know, whether it's the bus or whether it's the dagger, uh, no additive molt bonus is going to matter. So we can ignore all of those. Really, we care about only these multiplicative bonuses. After I've done all of my glass cards, after I've done all of my polychrome cards, then I can do times two with stencil. Then I can do times four with loyalty card. But that's, you know, not going to give us entire orders of magnitude growth there, right? Uh, you know, what's the difference between 2 million or 8 million? It's not even a whole uh, order of magnitude there. However, okay, the Joker that's going to matter the most is the Dusk Joker. And what this does is it copies all of your card enhancements. It copies all of your card effects. And so if we have glass cards, each of them giving us times two for a total of uh, times 32 from five glass cards, then this dusk gives us another activation on each of those glass cards for another times 32. So already with only glass cards, this one joker is giving us times 32, more than any other joker. If you then include these are polychrome glass cards, now this is acting as a times 243. So, you know, if polychrome is going to be the difference between getting 1 million and 200 million, uh, then this dusk is going to make the difference between getting a million or a billion points. And then finally, uh, the blueprint. Blueprint just gives us another copy of dusk, another 243 times on top of everything else, which means uh, the difference between getting uh, a billion points and a trillion points and so if you were going for you know what would be the world record for these random seed high scores they're all kind of similar they're all kind of in that ballpark around one trillion so a little bit less than a trillion a little bit more than one trillion but it's it's about one trillion and it's shared by maybe four maybe five people uh, you know if I'm recalling that correctly so there's about five people who got around one trillion and the technology is basically just dusk with blueprint, glass, polychrome cards. That's it. Nothing else really matters. But if you want to talk about, you know, these tiny edges here, if you do, okay, let's say you had a trillion point run and then you applied a stencil, then that would be a two trillion point run. And okay, well, that's technically, yeah, that's bigger than one trillion. Now, maybe something that's a little bit less obvious is if I have, let's say, Steven or I have Fibonacci and I get plus four molt for every card, then Dusk will also copy those. And, you know, like I said, uh, when newer players, they're trying to figure out, okay, I'm excited about high scores. How do I get the highest score? Maybe I need to somehow incorporate Steven and Fibonacci and maybe with my flush house, I want to use eights or I want to use twos or something like that all right so this is how it works yes dusk will copy all of these plus fours you get additional plus fours for each card however this happens sort of interwoven with the glass effects so let's assume we've got only glass cards and we start with our base flush house gives us 40 molt at level 5 with four series cards. So let's start with 40 molt. Then the first card we play is gonna give us plus four, takes us to 44, and then times two because of glass takes us to 88. And you know, in the beginning here, plus four on top of 44, that's about a 10% bump there. And then now when we double it to 88, then the next plus four happens after we've already doubled it. So another plus four on top of 88, well, 88 is not that much different from 92. Uh, so this is less than a 5%, or yeah, less than a 5% increase there. And then we're gonna double it again, and we're gonna add another four. And then now we're looking at less than a 2% increase. Uh, and so the overall effect, if we apply all of these and we calculate everything out, uh, either Fibonacci or Steven, each one adds about uh, 11 or 12% overall total. 
which means okay well that doesn't matter anymore uh, you know, plus 10% here is nothing compared to, you know, times two from stencil or times four uh, to loyalty card. However, if we look at, you know, these two here, Scholar and Todd, uh, these give us chips, which is different. So we said before, if we want to get uh, more stable scoring, higher scoring, we want to have a balance, a balance of chips and molt. And so being able to give us chips uh, is huge. You know, if we have, let's say, uh, 400 chips from our flush house, if I'm able to add 200 chips on top of that, that is a 50% increase, okay, which is, you know, the same as a polychrome joker. And so let's think about this. Uh, if Todd gives us plus 20 chips, for five odd cards, so that's a hundred chips. Dusk will double that to 200 chips, and then Blueprint will make that 300 chips. And now we're looking at even more than a 50% bonus. So there is some incentive for if I'm choosing what cards to make my flush house out of, uh, maybe tend towards odd cards. And then that way, if you do get Todd, it's a huge bonus. Uh, if you don't get Todd, uh, it's fine. It doesn't really hurt you to go for odd cards um, Now Scholar gives us notably it gives us both molt and chips And so you know whatever benefit we would have gotten from Steven combined with whatever benefit we would get from Todd however, the problem with Scholar is You can only have three aces you can't have five aces if you're going for a flush house and if you're going for five of a kind, it's going to be way weaker than a flush house anyway. And so uh, we said the plus molt that you get doesn't actually matter. What matters is the chips applied to each card. So actually, Todd is better. Todd is better. And also, uh, it's better to not go for aces as part of your flush house because, you know, if I have a seven or a five in the middle, it's easier for me to make more sevens. It's easier for me to make more fives using strength uh, tarot compared to making more aces. Uh, if you've got no other options, then sure, go for aces. But it is typically better to go for the middle cards rather than aces. Uh, Scholar is going to be, you know, maybe in the ballpark of plus 20%, plus 30% to your score. So, you know, if you've got nothing else, sure but you know, don't expect huge gains from the Scholar. All right, with all that said, let's jump into a run and I'm gonna apologize in advance for you know, potentially slow play. Uh, you know, I play a lot of uh, seated runs and so you know, my play style when I'm just playing regularly random seed runs is a little bit different. Um, you've seen me play you know somewhat off the cuff uh with these past tutorial videos when you're going for high scores you have to think a little bit harder uh, and so i'm going to play a lot slower but if we jump in here i like to think that getting these you know world record high scores is as much if not more about luck than it is about skill um, i think the top players all kind of play equally well and so, you know, it's really about getting the right conditions. So getting this uh, polychrome card, getting this dusk and blueprint joker, that is, you know, up to some randomness there. And so what I've gone ahead and done is I found uh, a seed where... So this is going to be a random seed, so I don't know all of what's coming, but I do know at least in this first pack here, we do have the aura and it does give us polychrome here. And so, you know, when I was searching for, you know, my personal best highest score, that's what I did, uh, is I just re-rolled until I got uh, this polychrome aura start. So it's about one in eight that you get a spectral skip in the anti one here. Uh, it's about one in six that the pack has an aura card offered to you. And then it's about uh, one in six again that the aura is going to give you uh, polychrome. And so all that put together, it's about one in 250. 
So 250 to 300 re-rolls uh, for you to get that polychrome aura start. I also happen to know uh, I re-rolled into the seed because it had uh, two spectral skips. And, you know, now we have an opportunity to talk about do I take Immolate or take Wraith? Immolate is my personal favorite. Like I said, this is two benefits. You remove cards and you gain money and you also get interest on the money that you gain, you know, this early in the game. Or I can spend just $4 to get a random rare joker. We could get smear joker, makes it easier for us to make flush houses. We could get stencil, uh, you know, with no other jokers here, that's going to be, you know, give us some scoring power there. If we get blueprint, that is the rare that we're looking for. We want blueprint so that we can copy our dusk, if we get dusk, when we get dusk. Um, but personally, I would do this. Personally, I would take the emulate. Um, your money is going to be at, as important or perhaps more important than anything else because you want to be getting you know enough tarot cards, enough arcana packs in order to turn your polychrome card into glass, use death tarot to copy your polychrome card. You want to have money so that you can afford shop rerolls, so that you can afford jokers. Uh, so that we can try to get that dusk card. You know, th there's no point in getting blueprint if we don't get dusk. There's no point in having blueprint if we don't get, uh, you know, copies of our polychrome card. And so to best set us up for success, uh, I choose immolate. And then this is also true later on in the run. Uh, I never take wraith, ever, in any run. Uh, unless maybe uh, I have you know nothing else offered to me and you know i get this spectral skip in the first ante so i am going to take emulate here and then now we've got uh i've taken out a bunch of clubs here and so maybe i'm trying to make flush houses with this three of hearts all right so that does set us up for a slightly awkward situation here uh in ante T1 boss, I am going to need three hands. Um, there exist two full houses that I think you can win in just two full houses, but it's hard. And so maybe what we're looking for is three hands, some combination of full house, uh, flushes, and straights. Uh, it's not impossible, but it is hard, it is rare. And so when we're going for high scores, you do want to play potentially a little bit riskier for potentially a uh, higher payoff. We're not playing safe anymore, we're playing for glory. And so, uh, yes, I got lucky here. I happened to get a uh, full house to start. So we'll go ahead and play that. All right, looking at this, uh, I've got another you know maybe i've got the three sevens here if i wanted to get another full house how would i do that um, i've got three sixes three fives two nines left and the aces uh, so maybe let's go for sevens and aces we got the sixes instead that's fine And then what have we got left? Uh, we have almost a straight here. We could get either a five or a 10. So let's do that. Okay, we got the straight. Looks like that. All right, we did it, we survived. All right. How do we want to prioritize here? We want to prioritize our ability to make flush houses. So we'll open the Arcana pack. We get the suit changer, we have the world. Great. Something I'm noticing that's slightly awkward here. Uh, I have all of these spades already, which means I have no choice here. All I have are these three cards that I can turn into spades. And since there is no pair, since there's no repeat, this on its own does not enable a flush house. Uh, I have 
two nines, two sevens, two fours, but no flush house yet. What can I do instead? Well, since I made these spades here, what I can try to do is I can try to go for a straight flush. And we know, you know, it's still very early in the run, and so we know a flush or a straight flush will win it for us. So we have this consideration, this question of, do I take these here? Um, and I know a straight flush will win not just this round, but the next round. And so if I don't take either of these, that gives me kind of two rounds where I can just go for that straight flush. You know, whatever we would do to go for a uh, flush house, we can do that to get our straight flush instead. So actually I'm gonna pass on these and I'm just gonna save my money. Um, it doesn't cost me interest if I buy one of these, I will still have more than $25 here, but I do want to save the money for in the future buying more tarot cards. Uh, I do want to get this grabber uh, in the future. If I'm looking at this here, uh, minus $10 takes me down minus one interest, but it gives me one extra hand. So actually I'm going to take that. And now it's 100% guaranteed I will be able to find my straight flush, which will for sure win this for me. So we've got nine and seven here. Let's try to get the other spades. Uh, we've got the four. Do I need the four? It doesn't matter, I'll hold on to it. Uh, let's see here, maybe I don't need the four and I'm looking for uh, eight and five, or eight and 10, but I really need the eight. All right, we got the five, we're looking for the eight. Didn't get the eight. We've got the 10. Try to find the eight. There we go. Uh, since we do have the grabber, you know, if I didn't get on this hand, I would have it on the next hand and I would even have one hand left over. All right, next we want to go Arcana Pack first. Okay, so this is particularly lucky. I'm offered another world so I can make more spades. Uh, somewhat un unlucky that these are all spades already, so I don't really have a choice here. Uh, some consideration for do I take $20? Is this suit changer worth $20? Uh, some of the time it's not, it's not worth $20. But in this instance, since it's early in the run, uh, I feel unlocking the flush house as early as possible is important. So at minimum, you know, I would be looking to make another nine here. Uh, making another two doesn't actually help us. Making a 10, I do have a 10 of spades already. Um, so that is, you know, somewhat useful. So really, all I'm doing is two cards, nine and ten. Two is kind of, uh, since I don't have another two of spades, doesn't actually help me. So really, I'm looking at, are these two cards worth $20? Uh, the answer is yes. All right, with that set up there, um, we do want to think about we're in the middle of Ante 2 now. Currently, I have no scoring jokers if i'm able to play my flush house then i can just win uh, based on that alone maybe some consideration for having a backup plan you know like ride the bus would help us beat let's say the anti-3 boss anti-3 boss is going to kill you a lot of the time uh, because i have 35 cards in the deck you know we took the immolate skip because i have you know two suit changes so far Let's have a little faith here. Uh, I'm not going to take the bus. Uh, if I were, you know, playing a normal run to just survive, if I was going for my win streak. Um, by the way, this is game 100 in my second 100 win streak. Uh, I would take the bus here. All right, so now we're looking for a flush house. Great, we got the nines. Uh, I don't have repeats of the eights, so maybe tens and nines. Uh, I have 
repeats of the fours and the sevens, uh, really I wanna get my nines. And so there is some consideration for maybe I throw away three, looking for making a pair with the tens, seven, or four. Maybe I throw away four, trying to make a pair with the tens and sevens uh, to maximize the chance of getting my nines. I'm actually gonna throw away five cards. And so now the only way for me to get a flush house is with exactly nines and tens. But we know it's guaranteed. The only difference is it may cost us an extra dollar or two. But we already have our interest up because we took the immolate. That is how powerful the immolate start is. All right, we've got some garbage here to throw away. And we've got our nines and tens. All right, Arcana pack first. Mm, let's see here. Let's go Celestial pack first. So I'm looking for series. I'll take it. Why did I do that? Now when I open this Arcana pack, if it gives me a fool, I'll be able to make a copy of series. If I did in the opposite order, uh, I would get another world card instead, make more spades instead. Maybe, you know, if you're playing safe, you want more spades, but I already have the one flush house. I don't need a second one. So I'm gonna start prioritizing series cards for that base scoring. Arcana were offered, uh, we could get a Joker. We don't have any Jokers. We don't need Jokers because we are playing flush houses. Uh, Hangman, what cards? Again, these are all spades. So we don't have much choice here. Looking at these, what do I want to remove? Um, I would say I have less eights than everything. So I want to at least remove an eight. And then between aces and tens, probably I want to remove an ace. Um, so I said before, uh, the ones in the middle, it's easier for us to make one card into another card using strength tarot. We can't really do that with aces. We can't turn things into aces. So I like to get rid of the aces. All right, notably, we are down on our hearts here. And we've just got the one three of hearts, which is our polychrome card. So in the end, what we're looking to do is either turn this into spades probably, or you know, potentially some other suit could also work. Um, or, you know, potentially turning some of these down here, clubs and diamonds into hearts. Um, and so we have, you know, threes we can turn into hearts. We have, you know, potentially these fives that we can turn into hearts. We have uh, these aces that we can turn into hearts, ish. All right, do I want to take either of these? Uh, I'm good on scoring, so I'm going to save the money. And let's go for, you know, maybe nines and sevens this time. almost a straight flush, but the straight flush is not gonna win it for us. Um, let's start with throwing away these, cause I know my sevens and fours, those are my spades. We got the sevens, looking for our nines. All right, since we got the tens here, I guess uh, it doesn't matter between tens and sevens, really what I need are my nines. And I have two hands, it's guaranteed that I'll see it. If I don't get it here, I'll get it next. All right, All right. Arcana first. All right, do I want to make diamonds? as a backup flush house. 
what would I turn into diamonds? Um, I don't want to hit my nine or my four. I could go tens and aces and threes into diamonds. That would give me two ace of diamonds, two three of diamonds. That doesn't really help me. So we're gonna commit all in on spades and take the emperor for two tarot cards. Fool potentially for another emperor card. What I would like is a series card instead. We don't get series between Emperor and Neptune. I'll take the Neptune here. I'm gonna hold on to the Fool. We can turn that into money or potentially we can turn that into a series card. All right, going into the next round here, some consideration for taking super position. Uh, eight ball is what I prefer because it's compatible with, you can play a flush house with aces or with eights um, and then that would count for the eight ball. Uh, super position, I'm considering it. We only have the three aces. Uh, it might be hard for us to squeeze that in. And so I'm actually gonna pass on the super position. Uh, typically I do that. Typically I pass on super position if I'm going for flush houses. Um, but uh, in other runs, if I'm just playing flushes or straights, I will take it and you know sort of uh, fool around with it for a bit. Uh, I do want to get this wasteful voucher. I do want to get the extra discard because it's going to be easier to find my flush house. For now, it's going to cost me two dollars worth of interest, so I'm going to pass and just pick it up next round. All right, uh, these spades are not my pairs, so I can skip them. Seven, I do have a pair of. We can skip everything else. We got the sevens looking for the nine. All right, we got the nines and sevens here. Uh, I have a magician, so I have the opportunity to make a lucky card, which I will do. Um, between these, the triple, the nines, I'm going to be playing more often. So let's hit the nines. Okay, uh, Celestial Pack first. If I get a series card, I want to try to copy it. Did not get the series card. I'm not really interested in any of this. So I will just skip and then in the Arcana pack. Hmm. Probably I want the priestess. Do I want to take the priestess for just one planet card? Not really. Do I want to use my fool on a magician? Not really. Uh, what are our other options here? Um, I could six and five and three, if I make those into clubs, that doesn't really help me either. So maybe nines and sevens, turning these into mult cards, that doesn't really matter either. None of this matters. So let's do this. Let's use the priestess for just one card. And we'll hold on to that for now. All right, now the Wasteful Voucher costs us $1 worth of interest compared to, you know, potentially $1 playing an extra hand. So I think it is worth it now. On average, it's going to be worth it to pick it up now. We lose the interest, but potentially we play less hands. Next. All right, uh, I've got the four or the seven that I can try to pair. Uh, I've got the nine. Still trying to pair that seven or four. Okay, we got the sevens. We got our nine. Tens or sevens doesn't matter. And the plus mult doesn't matter. All right. Uh, I want this hanged man. So, you know, I want to sell the Mars to make room for it. Before I sell the Mars, let's open up the Celestial Pack. Celestial Pack is going to offer me series. All right, we can sell the Mars. We can buy the Hangman. 
question do we make another series card for a higher scoring potential do we make a second hangman to make it easier for us to find our flush house for you know we're an anti-3 now we do need a plan to beat the anti-3 boss if it kills us everything is lost all of our 300 re-rolls are for nothing well let's make the series card all right we're playing for glory you know not necessarily playing it safe um also if i use the fool before i open the arcana pack then there's a chance that i get another fool did not get a fool now i have the option between do i want priestess for some planet cards or do i want the 20 dollars um, i think the money is going to be the safe pick here hanged man we already removed two aces so i could think about removing two more aces or here's a seven i already have the two sevens of spades so maybe i'm looking to make another seven of spades so i want to hold on to that one this three here potentially i want to uh match it with my three of hearts here so i want to hold on to that one yeah let's go ahead and remove the aces here that's an easy choice and then we'll go up to 40 dollars here now at what point do we start re-rolling um i think now is fine we've got 40 dollars here so we'll use a re-roll in general what you want to do is you want to spread out your re-rolls instead of doing four re-rolls in one shop you want to do one re-roll per shop for a while and so spreading it out is going to be good so let's roll here uh these things don't help me i don't plan on making straights even it you know as like a backup plan uh with the zany joker that makes my flush houses stronger but they don't need to be stronger really what it comes down to is flush house or bust let's go next all right zero discards five hands let's get nines or we lose all right we got two nines and we got two sevens here so question do we throw four looking for our nine and then if we do you know let's say four and we do it three times that's going to be 12 cards gives us six cards left over or do we throw the sevens now we 100 percent need the nine but we don't necessarily need the sevens because we could get the fours instead we could get the tens instead if we throw five times three hands that's 15 cards gives us only three cards left in the deck it actually increases our chance of getting our flush house if we throw away the sevens so i'm gonna do that all right we did get the nines here uh you know we're sad about not you know if we had kept the sevens we would have the flush house already but uh i think the safer thing was to throw away the sevens and now we're looking for either two fours or the one ten we've got this hand and then another hand to do it so we've got eight more cards All right, this is it we did get the 10 there was a reasonable chance there that we lose um, but again we're not playing for you know we're not playing safe we're trying to play for glory we're trying to play for high scores and so there it is all right uh the last thing that we used was a hermit card and so if we get a fool we'll get another hermit card and the question is would i rather have a fool for a hermit card or you know potentially a series card uh i think i'm in a position where i want the money so let's go arcana first we got the world we've got no choice 
Celestial. Series. Great. And now we're at that level 5 flush house. I said it's 40 base molt. Alright, do I want this crystal ball? Yes. Do I need any other additive molt bonus? Absolutely not. Do I take this spectral skip here? So, you know, some things to consider here. What do I actually want? If I took a spectral pack here, what would I actually hope to get? Um, I'm not taking Wraith, I'm not taking Talisman. I never take these, Grim and uh, Incantation or Familiar. Never take Ouija. Uh, I don't have any Jokers for Ectoplasm. Uh, I don't want Sigil because I already have a bunch of Spades. Uh, I don't need Aura because I already have a Polychrome card. The only thing that I would be looking for is Immolate. If I got Immolate, would it be worth it? Would it be worth it to remove cards and get $20? Probably. Um, here's some things to consider, you know, when you're thinking about whether or not to take a Spectral Pack here. You get, when you play the round, you get the money from beating the round. You also get money from interest so you're getting about ten dollars worth of value there um so already is that ten dollars worth more than what you would get from the spectral pack also you get to go shopping uh you get to see arcana packs and uh you know celestial packs and then so on and so you know every time you do a shop reroll it costs you money so you're kind of gaining value there by having a free reroll by being able to see the shop instead of skipping the shop and so it's almost never almost never worth it to take any skips especially you know spectral pack skips this late in the game uh in the first ante when you don't you know you need help getting the ball rolling definitely take those every time in ante one but beyond that never again and I mean that, never. All right, uh, we got the three sevens here. We also have three nines and three tens. So we're looking for sevens and nines. Let's do it. Sevens and nines, we got it. Um, you could potentially discard more if we had more enhanced cards, but really it's just the sevens and nines. All right, uh, I, the last card I used was Series, so let's go Arcana. Choice between no choice, here's $20. Celestial Pack, didn't get a Series. Uh, I'm not gonna take any of this because, you know, we still have that 15% chance we get a Fool card, and I wanna have $20 instead. Uh, do I want loyalty card to increase my scoring? It's a multiplicative bonus instead of a plus, you know, additive bonus here. Uh, sure, it's not the best, but it is, you know, it's no dusk. But, you know, if I've got all these joker slots, you know, why the heck not? Uh, I've got money here for a reroll. Uh, I've got a world card that's incredibly potent. Now I can finally turn my polychrome card into spades. Uh, some consideration for if I re-roll here and I go down to $30, uh, would I want to buy anything? No. With $30, if I bought something, it would take me below interest, and so maybe that's not what I want to do. Uh, here I do get the three. Um, I want to try to make, you know, a flush house with more threes than that. I want to try to get the three of clubs and the three of diamonds. Since I have both of the vouchers, Grabber and Wasteful Voucher, I have a good chance of getting there. And so maybe let's do this. I do want to keep the nine. I'm looking for my threes. And we can throw everything else away. Okay, I got my threes. That happened faster than I was expecting. And now nines and threes. Now really what I'm looking for is my Justice Tarot to make a glass card. I'm also looking for uh, my Dusk Joker. Star's not gonna help me. Spectral Pack, sure, why not? Wraith, I said never. Even if I had $4, never. Get out of here. 
Uh, Celestial pack. No series, that's fine. Uh, we've got some extra money here. Do I want star? Nope. Let's pick up this Mercury card for the block. Actually, you know, we'll take a star for the block also. And then do a reroll. Alright, Sun I don't need, Uranus I don't need. Uh, between these, which would I rather block the uh, tarot cards or the planet cards? I prefer to block the uh, planet cards. And so, you know, we've said in the past, as long as I'm holding on to these two planets, then those will not spawn and it increases my chance of getting series. All right, here. Uh, our options are we've got four threes and we've got a couple triples now. So really what I want are my threes and my nines. So let's look for those. Okay, we got the threes already. We got the sevens. Um, yeah, I could play those, uh, but I do still want to try to get my nines because I have the lucky nine. So let's do that. Uh, this is not a nine. And we didn't get it, which is totally fine. Uh, we'll play a flush house anyway. 20,000 points, almost 21,000, so I know I'm good for the next two rounds. Temperance for $3? Uh, no thank you. Let's see here. The... what was the last card that I used? last card that I used is still Hermit, because I haven't picked up any series cards. So let's look for a series card now. We got it. And then now Fool for another series card. Didn't get it. We do have Justice, but I don't have uh, my Polychrome card. But I still have, you know, this three that I can turn into glass. And I will do that. Mm. Let's do this instead. Instead of the three, we'll hit the nine. Here's why. So, let's say I hit this three. Let's say I turn this three into glass. And let's say later on, it's anti-five, so there's not a whole lot of later on that's going to happen. But, you know, let's say later on, later on I get a death tarot card. Then, potentially what I'm looking for is I make another three here, or I make another three glass three. And then if I get, you know, two death cards, I don't really want to have four glass threes or two glass threes and two polychrome threes i want to have a mix of threes and also something else so if this were the polychrome three i would want to stack more on the same card since it's not the polychrome three i want to be looking for something else to turn into glass so that way when i spread it out and i make copies um, then i can fit more in the same flush house hand some decision between making nines or sevens if i make this into glass i'm not going to want to play it which means i only have two nines left to make my sort of vanilla flush houses and i want to play the nines because i have the lucky one that could give me money so i'm going to put this on the seven and that's going to lock us out of sevens now i'm never going to play that seven also with the threes here um, if I turn one of these threes into glass, then that's going to lock me out of that three, and I want to keep as many threes as I can. So let's turn this seven into glass instead of also the eight, because we want to say, you know, odd cards for Todd potentially. Uh, that's all we can afford. Next. All right, we got the seven, which we can easily throw away. Uh, we've got the threes and let's go for the nines. We got the nine and the three, that's it. All right, we are gonna need a little bit more points there. We saw, you know, without the lucky card, that was only 17,000. So let's go 
Celestial pack. No series card. Okay. World to make more spades. More spades means potentially more flush houses. You know, if I potentially need two flush houses to win a round, that's a thing that I could do. I think here the better thing to do is go for Emperor. Uh, if we're going for high scores, if we, you know, we're already kind of struggling along here. We only have the one glass card. We didn't uh, make this glass a polychrome card we haven't hit any death cards yet so this is not going to be a super high score um and so i don't care if i lose uh what i care about is potentially i could get what i want is this death card so to give me the best chance of getting a death card let's make room and pick up this emperor that was insanely lucky all right, now it's time to, you know, we'll sit up in the chair and we'll uh, actually play for real now. So holding on to these, I'm waiting to draw my three so I can make it into glass and then copy it. Uh, as far as scoring goes, we're fine. Don't worry about it. All right, seven is illegal. So I'll go ahead and throw that away. All right, we got some threes and we got the nines here. Fours, we have two of, so we can go ahead and drop those. All right, we got tens and sevens. I know that this is not 20,000 points. Great. Three into glass. Getting rid of doesn't matter. Let's do a six. Now, these are illegal. Nines, and I've got one more three in the deck. There we go. All right, here. Uh, Emperor, do I want to use it now or do I want to open up the Arcana pack first? Let's... Emperor first. Okay. Hermit, do I want to use it now or do I want to open the Arcana pack first? Uh, I want Hermit now in case I hit a fool. Now, do I go Celestial or do I go Arcana? I'm going to go Arcana first, because I want to use this Priestess before opening the Celestial pack. I want to open the Arcana pack before using the Priestess, because I don't want to see another Priestess. Um, none of this matters. Maybe Judgment. At the worst, it'll give me two bucks. Show me the money actual money we got three bucks we high rolled that's great uh celestial do i want to open it now if i do this with my priestess yeah so i've got you know here's a planet there's two planets this is jumbo so show me the series let's do this sell the star pick up the mars uh re-roll for another planet that's not a planet that's a Dusk Joker. All right, I did say at the beginning that this was a random seed, so this is this is lucky. We, we're not even, we didn't even have that much money. We didn't even do that many rerolls. This is actually, we got lucky here, and like I said, we are on a win streak now. Uh, I didn't, you know, when I said reroll, actually what I was doing is I was just playing the game, uh, and then I got the double uh, spectral skip. Anyway, uh, let's see here. We... Celestial now. I was hoping to get another planet card for the block, but we didn't get it. That's okay. And miserable. That's okay. I mean, we already have level six. That's five series cards. We didn't get the telescope. Um, and so that's fine. Uh, I don't, I neither want nor need a banana. Let's go next. 
All right, let's talk about loyalty card. How do we make this work? Loyalty card is gonna happen every six hands and we want loyalty card to happen at the same time that our dusk happens and we want dusk to be the final round we have five hands and so how do i make that happen okay what i don't want to happen is i don't want to win with a flush house now because then i won't be able to activate my loyalty card so I want to waste a hand first, getting no benefit from the loyalty card. And then after I do that, then I want to win on the next hand. But the next hand, uh, I know that my flush house is not worth 28,000. So what I need to do is I need to play my glass card, potentially breaking it. I mean, there's a chance it survives, but there's a chance that it breaks. So where's my glass card? My glass card was my seven. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to play my glass seven. Okay. So let's start. I also don't want to waste hands. So here's the fours. Uh, I don't want to play the threes because those are my polychrome ones. So let's go looking for the sevens. Yeah. All right, we got the seven. Uh, sevens and fours could work. I have no more fours. I have two more discards. Uh, I have two nines that I could get. I have two tens that I can get. I'm going to throw away one of these fours. Uh, I don't want to run into a situ situation where I have to use a hand and then I lose my loyalty card. So let's discard five. Discard five again. Okay, we've done it. Here's tens and sevens. I've got three cards left in the deck, which means actually if I want, I could get my uh, lucky nine. Let's do that. So let me let me just talk this through. This is for me. This is not for you. You've already figured it out by now, but let me talk this through. Uh, I play this hand. I use the loyalty card. Then loyalty card has six hands left. So my next hand is going to win this round, giving me five hands for the next round. Yes. And I don't want to use my glass card here, but I have to because I want to try to get this loyalty card to work. Brutal. So Losing the glass card, that's times two from the glass card. That's another times two from the dusk. That's times four. Loyalty card gives us times four. So it works out the same, even if we lost it. But there was the chance that we didn't lose it. And then, you know, it would be glorious. That's okay. We've gotten lucky enough times. Uh, here we can pick up this stencil. Uh, celestial pack. I want to re-roll for a planet first. Let's do that. There we go. Pluto for the block. Did not get series. That's sad. I'm going to say it's okay, but it's sad. Uh, let's see here. Do I want Fibonacci? Fibonacci for, we've got threes, and I could potentially play fives, threes and fives. Let's do threes and fives. Cool. I said this is not going to matter a whole lot if you have lots of glass cards. If you have less glass cards, then it does matter a little bit. So I will take that. Uh, Arcana pack here. All right, so I could get Priestess, giving me two more planets. You know, another chance of getting a series card. Or I can take $16. That's going to be two rerolls. 
hoping to find a blueprint or a blackboard. Which would I rather have? Series card at this point. Remember this is before our glass effect happens after. Series card would be about an 8% boost. I think I want the money rather than, you know, a chance at two planet cards. Okay. All right, that's nothing of consequence. This ice cream will give me a little boost here. Um, I need to sell a joker to the final boss, so I don't have room for the ice cream. Between the ice cream and the Fibonacci, Fibonacci is gonna help the score more. Foil card, not gonna matter. Jupiter, not gonna matter. If I sell these, I can afford a reroll, but I can't actually buy anything. If I had gotten a blueprint, I would sell loyalty card, I would sell stencil, I would sell everything to pick up a blueprint. Uh, but we didn't get it anyway, so whatever. Alrighty, going into the final round here, we are looking for to make Fibonacci. We want fives and threes, and that is it. Uh, do I have aces? No, I don't have aces. Fives and threes, let's see. There's our threes. There's, we do need an extra three, okay. Uh, okay, down to seven cards left. All right, we've got our fives and threes and we do wanna make sure we have enough cards left to, you know, do this. So four hands remaining, that means it'll trigger on the last hand. Oh boy, we did it. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it should be a no brainer at this point, but you know, there's a little bit of tension hanging in the air. So I do want to play a little bit cautiously. Uh, there we go. And now we get to see, you know, what this dusk stuff is all about. There's our level six flush house. Alrighty, it's not a trillion points, it's not a billion points, but uh, hey, it's not bad. Alright, so that's going to be it for this one. You know, like I said, uh, playing for high scores is a little bit different than just playing to survive. Um, and so, you know, maybe we learn something, maybe not. Uh, and it could be a while till, you know, I put out another video. It'll just depend on maybe there's some interesting challenge that I like or, you know, maybe there's something that I feel you would benefit from hearing. So, all right, take care, everyone.